Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah beware of oppression, beware of injustice uh, injustice being taking the rights of people and not returning their rights or taking the rights unlawfully and, or not observing the rights of others عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله تعالى عنه رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اتقوا الظلم فإن الظلم ظلمات يوم القيامة واتقوا شحة فإن الشحة أهلك من كان قبلكم حملهم على أن سفكوا دماءهم واستحلوا محارم محارمهم أخرج مسلم in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Beware of oppression, for oppression is a darkness on the day of resurrection. And beware of miserliness, for miserliness destroyed those who were before you, as it incited them to bloodshed, to shed blood and make lawful what was unlawful for them. In this hadith, the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu huma, we see that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam warned us about oppression. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ettaqu dhulm. He said, fear dhulm. So that you should uh, fear or beware of set between yourself and dhulm a hajiz. Uh, meaning that you should set righteousness and good deeds, and khair, and generosity between yourself and oppression. Otherwise, what you might do may become oppressive. You may be one of those people who oppresses your, your uh, family members, your mother, your father, your aunts and your uncles and cousins. Or you may be one of those people who oppresses their wives from the men's side, or even perhaps from the woman's side, oppressing her husband by not giving him his right. Because oppression, one of the types of oppression, is that to not observe the rights of others. Not giving people their due rights. So the husband has a haq over, uh, the wife has a right over her husband and that he must uh, spend on her in what is sufficient. Uh, provide food, clothing, and shelter for her to what is in accordance with their custom. So this is a right she has over him. Likewise, uh, he has a right over her that when he uh, has the desire to be with her, that she uh, answers his call, that she is there for him. Because men need this uh, protection from uh, going astray. They are easier, easier led astray. And this is what we see really from the sunnah of mankind that men tend to be flightier and more uh, less focused and more physical uh, than women tend to be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So it's very important that everyone gives everyone else their due rights, the rights that they have over them. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, And beware of miserliness, for miserliness destroyed those who were before you, the people from before us, those earlier nations, they were destroyed due to miserliness, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. So by taking those attributes of those people who are miserly and, 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 and abusing the rights of others. For example, when you think about someone, who, the practice of riba, of, of usury, that this is following the sunnah of some of those nations that came before us that were oppressive towards people. That when they, when someone borrowed from them, they asked for more back. Oh, you want one dollar? Give me, uh, I'll, I'll loan you a dollar, but give me one dollar and ten cents back. Uh, you want a thousand dollars? Give me one thousand two hundred dollars back, and I'll get that money to you quick. Okay, and this we see is the, uh, an, an oppressive system which is in place around the world which is there and it causes oppression. And it stems from a type of miserliness and a type of greediness. And so 
we should know, and if we follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab Al-Kareem, وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ About the mu'mineen, you know, the characteristics of the believers, is that they, from, from what they, from what we have provided for them, because again, we forget, we earn, we, maybe we have a good job, maybe we don't, whatever, but we don't tend to reflect on that ayat and, and really, really reflect. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ from what we have provided, who provided that risk? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't the fact that you had a nice degree and you got this good job. Okay, those are wasail. Those are means to that. Those things helped you. But ultimately, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that risk. And, and I forget this, and I want to encourage my brothers and sisters not to forget this. So from what we have provided them, they spend. So since Allah has provided us for that, provided for us, then we should we should spend and fit the characteristics of the believers, be away from miserliness, and see the result, the positive result, because Allah's not going to command us with good, except He's going to reward us with good. Al Jaza min Jinsal Amal. The reward of something is from a part of the the actual thing that you do. This is a, a principle that the, the scholars mention. al jaza min jins al-amal. So for example, if you are spending in good, then your reward will be that good spending will be upon you, meaning that you'll be, your risk will be increased. So don't forget that. And that's a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters. And that avoids what destroyed the people from, a, from before us. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, And beware of miserliness, for miserliness destroyed those who were before you. So they were destroyed because of it. It wasn't just simply that they had miserliness, and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that characteristic, but he ﷺ said, they were destroyed because of it. billah, And as it incited them to shed blood, the wealth, look at, look at what's going on in the world. And I just, just to give us a, a tasawwur, so we can, so this knowledge seems practical to us. When you think about it, most disputes in the world, it has a indirectly or perhaps directly is the miserliness of certain leaders of nations uh, and, and over land, land disputes and minerals and, and wealth those countries possesses. For example, look at the colonization of Africa as a continent. It was greed from the Europeans. Greed from the Europeans. And now America and other nations have stepped in and are still exploiting Africa. Africa as a continent is still left behind and it's one of the wealthiest continents. Amazing you could have so much wealth under your feet, but everyone else outside of your co country benefits and outside of your continent benefits. And this is what? This is the result of miserliness. This is that evil seed. And what is the result of that? The Prophet ﷺ said, for miserliness destroyed those who were before you as it incited them to bloodshed. How much bloodshed? We don't think, we can't even think of Africa in the, in the past probably almost a hundred years, except that you think of a country there that is in bloodshed and turmoil over its resources, and fed by outside powers. If you know anything about the blood diamond trade, and I'm sorry to get off base, but I want you to get a tesor on a bigger level, a global level. When you see what happened in uh, those nations where, uh, it's not Cameroon, but I can't think of the, the nation, but anyhow, the point being is being fed guns, fed guns in conflict, allowing for European powers to benefit so you could buy that beautiful diamond bracelet in, uh, in the UK, so you could have that in France, so you could have that in America. And it was fueled off the blood and the death of people who weren't even considered people. So it shows you the danger. And if we practice the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and really look deep and practice it in all levels, meaning from the small things in our daily lives, but even all the way up to the top, to the leaders of our countries. If we go back to the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we can go back to the point of this hadith. We can go back to justice, which is the opposite of dhulm and oppression.
and making lawful what was unlawful. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our benefit of our Ibrahim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and our Nabi Muhammad.